Hello and welcome back. It is currently Sunday, January 22nd, and I am about to go into my classroom because we're gonna set up for our operation day today and I wanted to walk you through. Before we hop into like the setup, what's needed, what we use and all of that kind of stuff, um, the reason why we came in on a Sunday is because we were not ready on Friday um, before or right after school to just get all of our setup done. Typically with our classroom transformations, we have them set up by former students for the most part, and we get them done right after school the day before they're gonna take place. That was not um, the case this time, and again, it was mostly our fault, so don't freak out and think like, oh my God, this classroom transformation is gonna require me to go in on the weekend. Like I literally can't remember the last time we went in on the weekend, so this is just our choice. We could have made it work, but we just wanted to make sure that we, um, Took our time to set it up because we have not done this transformation since 2020 that was like one of the last things we did with our students that year before COVID hit so um i am going to try my best to walk you through what katie and i set up katie is my partner teacher and then you can um, get more details or if you have any questions at the end just let us know but let's get so to make our actual patient rooms we use magnets and blue tablecloths from dollar tree as you can see we have ceilings that have these metal like strip frames and so it's super easy for us to just use the magnets to hold up each tablecloth. This year we put two operating rooms on one side and then two on the other side of our room and so that did require us to use more tablecloths than usual because obviously they're not sharing a wall but super doable still and like I said super easy. And a big shout out to Katie, my amazing teaching partner because she was able to put them up super fast and she's taller than me, so it was just a little bit easier for her to do. What is up? Happy Monday, I think. Um, we left off yesterday with some setup, so I'm gonna walk you through what the whole classroom came out like, um, and just a quick process of what we do, um, and we're gonna get the day started. It's about 7.20ish, so my kids will be getting here in about 40 okay. minutes. So we'll start with student workstations. At each group, um, you're gonna see the following. So all of the things you see as far as medical supplies were donated by local hospitals or doctor's offices. So just ask if you're interested in doing something like this. So we got face shields, a mask, a hairnet, and then a gown for each student to wear. Um, we're gonna leave it up to them what they feel comfortable wearing. Obviously some kids are like claustrophobic like me and so the, wearing all of them um, might make them uncomfortable. And then each student also has um, a recording sheet. This is where they will solve all of the problems for the day. Um, and then in each team, we assign a captain, AKA the head surgeon. And then that is just the name of their group hospital um, who they're working for. So I have, I think my biggest class is 33. So I have eight tables out. So there's about four to five kids in each team. So those are student workstations. And then these are the four operating rooms. So we just uh, mounted these, not even mounted, hung these with magnets. We have like those ceiling type of tiles. And so there's like a metal piece. So we took advantage of that and we just used two magnets to hold up our Dollar Tree tablecloth. So this is the layout of each operating room. What students will do is their team will come and grab one of the patient files. They take it back to their team, but I'll just show you here. Um, inside of the file, they're gonna see like the patient overview or like medical history, an x-ray of what they're gonna have um, the operation done on and then it explains what the procedure is and then there's three different problems for them to solve this is order of operations for us but there's also an editable editable template um, where you can make your own questions and then for each one based off of the answer they get is how they are going to check their answers at the end of all three problems um i have not printed them yet actually my partner teacher is going to print them but we like to kind of be extra silly, so we made like really short clips. A lot of them are just TikTok video trends um, that relate to the patient, and um, we made QR codes out of them. And so when students are done solving all three problems, one person, probably their captain, will come and scan the QR code, and then they're going to watch the video, and that will tell them what tools were used. So that's how we like to check answers. You could also just lay out the answer keys, um, but that's operating room one. 
This is operating room two. Again, same idea, same format. This one is Bad Bunny and he broke his thumb. Um, this is like our little waiting room. So we just put some like operation games there and then some fake like doctor kits that we found at Dollar Tree that um, my partner teacher with one of like their medications, that's how it came. And so they just saved a bunch of those. And then this is operating room three. Taylor Swift broke her foot here. And then operating room four. And this is Cristiano Ronaldo. And he broke his nose when he was trying to hit the soccer ball. So those are the four operating rooms. Again, like literally it took us under 10 minutes to hang all of these. Um, and then all the things you see, including these like skeleton printouts, are literally just printouts that we created. Um, all the props, all of these are from Dollar Tree. Literally, they're like kitchen utensils and then like a fake Play-Doh thing. Um, this is a baking tray. Obviously very optional, but just adds to the theme. And we bought them the first time we did this, like, I don't know, five years ago. And we just save them and reuse them every year. And then these I got the last time we did it, which was when COVID hit about three years ago. Um, and... Those were on Amazon. I have them linked, I believe. Um, last year, the last time we did this, I think I filled them with water and red food coloring, but this year we're just leaving them as is. Um, so yeah, that's basically what you see at each table. Okay, and then we always have a slide display just in case because we know students forget and don't always listen. So this is what will be projected and then we're also gonna have like a heart monitor audio playing in the background on loop. Um, again, it's just expectations and then um, the process of what I just explained what they're going to be doing so we always like I said like to have that up because students are forgotten right, other than that as far as my outfit I wore just all black this year uh, we have worn scrubs in the past but it's just really cold um, this year so we decided to just wear like black yoga pants um, we had ordered these stethoscopes like our first year doing this so we just saved them every year so I'll throw on my coat my stethoscope and then my fake badge um before my kids walk in i do teach at homeroom so we always wait we don't let our first period come in because it is sixth graders and we want them to be surprised when they walk in so we'll probably take them to the library for first period um and i won't put on any of those things until literally right before my math classes start so that is what i'm wearing um but here is one last scan of the room that's just the junk over there, all the extras. Um, I teach three math classes, and so we will have to obviously replace like the mass and things that um, need to be changed out for each class. Okay, so other than that, um, like I said, a lot of the things you see were donated by offices, doctors' offices and hospitals, so definitely reach out to them if you're interested in doing something like that. Um, all the printables you see are available in my partner teacher and I's TPT store. Um, we have the sixth grade ready to go version, the one we're using, and then we also made an editable template because we know not everyone teaches sixth grade. So, um, that literally has everything you'll need. Um, but if you have any questions or, um, need clarifications, just let me know. And I'm going to try to get a few clips of it in action. But, um, I hope this gave you some inspiration and some ideas of ways that you can bring this into your classroom. So I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.